Hi, my name is Wendy, and this is Pokemon. Pokemon is a collectible card game. It's usually sold in small booster packs like this. It's called a booster pack, which has 10 cards in it. The cards are put in here randomly. They put out a new set of cards every few weeks. And then there's an overarching set that comes out every few months. But all Pokemon cards are pretty much interchangeable. You can use different sets with different cards and it doesn't matter. This means that if you buy one booster, like this one, Legends Awakened, and you buy another one, you're not going to get the same cards, like baseball cards. It's random. Most of them are common. They'll have two uncommons and one rare. And sometimes every three packs, there's an ultra rare. You can also buy Pokemon in starters. This happens to be a starter. Starters are pre-constructed. They have a list of what's in the starter on the back. So this is just to get you started. It'll come with the rules, which you will not get with a booster, and a play mat, which has spaces to walk you through your first game. So that's handy to learn how to play. Younger children who play Pokemon sometimes just want to collect cards. They either want to collect their favorite characters, like Pikachu here, or they want to collect rare or special cards. Here's a Chimchar. He's a foil that makes him more special. Here's an EX Pokemon. They have uh, special evolutionary powers, and so they're even more rare and special. In general, when you so some kids don't want to play the game. They just want to collect. If you just want to collect and not play, you should just buy booster cards because you're more likely to get rare and ultra rare cards in a booster deck that they can use to you know look at and trade with their friends. But if you want to play, you'll need at least one starter. To play the game of Pokemon, you need a deck. Usually it's one or two strengths of Pokemon, types of Pokemon, such as fire, fighting, water, lightning. In order to play a card, you're going to need to place energy of the appropriate type. This is what an energy card looks like. This happens to be fighting energy. This one here happens to be psychic because they have a psychic and fighting deck here. Because Pokemons have types. And they also have counter types that they are uh, weak towards and other types that they are strong towards. So, for instance, lightning Pokemon like Pikachu are weak towards ground because ground is immune to them and they're strong towards water. So it kind of makes sense if you think about the elements. The thing about these energy cards is they're not exciting. They're sort of common, but the only way to get them is to buy a starter. You're not going to get them in the booster packs. So sometimes it's actually hard to get enough energy for your deck because you need about 11 or 12 of an energy per color if you have two colors in your deck. That's a pretty good mix. A deck is usually 40 cards. So you draw cards and you place them, but you can only play the animals, the, the Pokemon, if you have the, enough of the right energy. The energy card that you're using to place your card will then be tapped, which means it's turned sideways, and then you play the Pokemon card. Pokemon cards have symbols in the corner. In the right-hand corner, it'll have a little round symbol with a color and a, a symbol. This one is yellow with a lightning bolt, so it tells you it's an electric lightning type Pokemon. On the left side of the card will be the name of the, of the Pokemon. A picture follows. Underneath the picture, it'll tell you which evolution type it is. Basic, stage one, or stage two. You can't play a stage one until you've played the basic. You can't play stage two until you play basic and stage one, and they're all out on your table. The attacks that the Pokemon have are listed here, and the symbols next to them tell you what kind of energy that you need in order to get that attack, attack to work. So you need to have that energy free and to tap it to use that attack. 
It'll either have a color and a symbol, or it'll just be gray with a star. That means any kind of energy that you have available, it doesn't matter. Just two of any kind here. On the bottom of the card, on the left-hand side, is the weakness of this type of Pokemon. The center is its resistance, and the right is its retreat cost. So if you want to take it out of battle because you're afraid it's going to faint, you have to pay, in this case, one energy to remove it without it fainting. In the very corner, there'll be a little symbol telling you which pack the Pokemon came out of. I mean, which set, like Diamond, Pearl, Legends, Awakened. And its number in the set, there are 108 Pokemon in this set. That's about a normal, give or take. There'll be 108 different cards that you can collect in order to have a complete set. And then its rarity, this is a common card. Basics are usually common, and stage twos are the rare. Also, foil are rare. When two Pokemon are are out to fight each other, they'll do attacks. Often, the attacks depend on a simple flip of a coin, and they'll tell you um, in the text how much damage it does, 20 or 35, you know, 50. Flip of a coin, you know, heads or tails. And then it'll do attack damage. So if it does 20, then he's down to 60. But you need to get him all the way down to zero before he faints. When he faints, he uh, comes off and goes into the discard pile. He can also be asleep, which means that he's been used, he's attacked, in which case you tap onto the side. Sometimes they get confused, which is a special attack. You put them upside down. Sometimes they're paralyzed, which is shown by the opposite of tap. Since when you tap a card, it's facing you, you tap it to the left, if he's paralyzed, he goes to the right, and that's how you keep track. When you've run out of cards in your draw pile, the game is over. The first person to run out of cards loses. And that's how you play Pokemon.